uh, discuss you about uh, three stuff. First, that big stuff here, the flip paper, which was a project that I did with uh, Jeremy Cartel, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Uh, the second stuff, the most important, is actually the library we've been uh, using to, to create this stuff. And the third stuff is the lessons we learned from using uh, the flip paper on the library. So what is uh, at the center of everything is actually drawing. The point of this sculpture was actually to have something you could draw on and you can play on, to have a mix of both. So also our inspiration for that was mud. Mud is dirty, mud is a mess, you don't want that inside, you want that outside. When you're past 18 years old, you say no to mud, and you should not. You should not, you, say, you should say yes to that. Because mud is reality, and your computer would be virtuality, let's say. If you can, I mean, virtuality is making a lot of buzz lately, and, it, and it's pretty good. But for instance, if you want to create uh, interaction in your virtual world, you need to define all the rules, all the rules. If you didn't think of one rule, then you can be, uh, it can be used by, uh, by the user. But in reality, in the world of murder, you have already a lot of rules that have been already pre-made, like gravity. We won't test it out today, but it should be working. So you can already actually bet on a lot of stuff. You don't have to construct everything from scratch. You can actually work from something that is, well, for one, amazing, and that people know already. It's already uh, an idea of making, uh, I don't know, like the best pen, as that everybody would know how to use this tool in a specific area. But if you're based your world on reality, then it's obvious for everybody. So coming from reality, what we wanted to have as an interaction was drawings. It was really our, actually more than drawings. We will speak a lot about drawing because it's more common to the mind, let's say, but it's just canvas and pigments. It's just colors. It's really just colors. But usually when you apply colors, you think of drawing, you think of felt pen and this kind of stuff. So what we, what we wanted to have is to have actually drawings as entry points for a gameplay. Well, maybe not even just a video game, but something to interact with, something to, uh, that could be augmented. And by the way, if this is me, this is Jeremy, so you have an idea of who he is already. So we tried, we thought about, okay, how can you actually use uh, a drawing to, uh, to interact? What, a, what sense can it make? Uh, what we thought actually was to first use uh, a video game. So it would be better actually, it's, it's easier, you know, it's like, I need to win, I need to do something. The interaction is pretty clear. We thought about many stuff and we ended with pinball. Pinball is fun. Pinball is pretty easy to start with, but very hard to master. And uh, so we uh, created this flip paper, which was a mix between a pinball machine and a draft table. So you have uh, something nice to, uh, to, uh, to draw in and something nice to play in already. You have little buttons of style on the side, left and right, the launch and all that. So it's something you can really interact with. Hop, and uh, oops, next one, yep. So the result is that actually, you have the sculpture itself, kids, older people draw on it, you have a video projector that projects on top of the drawing, you have a web camera that analyzes actually the, um, the drawing itself, and then you have some little objects that are drawn on top of it to be able to play. So to get a better view of how it's working, here you see for instance a drawing that is already scanned. So hop, you have a scan for the video projector, analysis of, uh, of the webcam, MR, no, bullshit! There is an issue here, but it's all right. It's all right, because uh, I'm not sure if it was made on purpose, but it's very nice, actually, that he did that. And ta-da, now it's working. So the issue is that you have, uh, so of course, those two are added on, uh, on the fly. You have the drawing, you have uh, the scanning, the analysis that we'll see uh, a bit later, and then you can just play. And you can add whatever you want. So for instance, this one was a late addition, pretty fun. When you have a little blue dot, pop, you can have a flipper and then you can just play it as, um, as the common ones on the back. <laughs> so the, the fun part of it is both actually, uh, is both, yeah, and of course it's on paper. The point of it is that not to use, I don't know, like a, a whiteboard, not to use um, a screen, a touch screen or something, but to have something real because of, well, second slide, the mud. We will see later why basing on reality was really, really useful and created amazing results really past what we uh, expected. And yeah, you can have pretty... Is done. Oh, it's done. Wow. There we go. Yeah, sure. And 
So here you go. One, two, one, two. Yeah. Wow. Well, okay. So uh, anyway, next. Uh, so yes, we start always with a blank uh, sheet of paper. Those actually are pictures taken straight from uh, the sculpture itself. So then uh, you have people studying drawing bits by bits. And it's very interesting because it's not just, an, uh, not just the point of having one drawing and that's it, you're done. No, no, it's always a matter of you try a little bit and you check that nah, it's not working well actually and then you make modification, as we saw already actually in the video. So the point is that you repeat, you draw, you scan, you play, you draw, you scan, you play, you draw, you scan, you play, and in the end, and we'll see that later too, there is some kind of loop between playing and drawing, and you're not even sure actually in the end if you're drawing, playing, or actually both are the same stuff. And this was really, really, really one of our aim actually, to really mix both. It's not like, okay, you're a drawer, so bam, you're going to do something, and you're a gamer, so after that you will come and you will play the stuff. No, no, it's both at the same time. Which was pretty fun, because some people actually had no idea about how to draw, and they said, ah, but I don't know how to draw. It's like, okay, just launch the ball, it will just fall, so you know that since you've played already pinball, you need to put stuff on the side. And bam. The person that didn't want to draw is already drawing. And of course, as soon as you start drawing, then it's just a matter of continuing and it's way easier. And the opposite is true. Somebody that is not really into video games or even less pinball, but likes to draw, will start drawing and will be very curious actually to see his drawing, uh, his or her drawing come to life and what can be uh, the gameplay that can be uh, from it. So for that, we needed some inner tech. And I wish, I wish I could tell you it was like super complex, super complicated, that we use cutting edge technology. Not at all, not at all. Uh, we use like, ch actually not, not so cheap, but good, web good uh, webcam. But at some point we tried to get a pretty uh, expensive one, which was very, very nice, but harder to use. In the end, a webcam is way enough. Video projector and a mirror for projection too. So pretty, uh, pretty easy actually. And the point of it is that it can be used by, well, anybody actually at home. So that was one of our aim in, um, in doing the library and in releasing it in the end. So that's what uh, the camera see after making some kind of uh, geometrical correction on the picture in order to have one fair rectangle and not some trapezoidal uh, shape. So this is what we see. Then we just do some very simple foreground background to get what we really want from the picture. Then we do hello, well, better. Then we do some uh, um, some supervised uh, analysis of the drawing based on color. So basically, you can imagine that those little um, art, let's say, are uh, predefined by us to know. Okay, these are these are the colors we want. At first, we try to have some kind of uh, local unsupervised uh, separation of colors which was very fun because you could use any color you want and hopefully the computer by itself would separate the colors. But it didn't make sense because, yeah, you have separation, that's all right, but you don't really know what to apply on those colors as a set of rules. So in the end, it made way more sense for the designer of the game to, uh, to choose himself, herself, the color actually, and then to apply the rules on them. Here, for instance, we have, uh, well, it doesn't really show here, but this is supposed to be green, blue, red, and yellow. So we have already a separation based on color. Here we have four. Sometimes in the past we have three. We can use as many as you can have separation already on the graph, depending on what you want to do. Then we have already a separation, and you can already put meanings on, uh, on the colors. For instance, at the f in the first iteration, what we had was uh, not even yellow yet. We had red that were the bumpers. We had uh, blue that were the walls. That's it. And we had uh, green, which was uh, for the acceleration. And it was already pretty fun. But then you can uh, add a little uh, more stuff uh, with uh, the contours. Little contour analysis. And then based on, um, the, I mean, based on uh, the, um, the surface and on the perimeter of the shape, you can know if it's a big one, a small one, more like um, a circle, more like a disc, more like a straight line, something like that. And you can add some stuff on top of it. For instance, um, for instance, let's go back to the previous one. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Those were our shoe tables. You can kill them, actually. And they revive after a while. Those ones are bumpers and they stay. And uh, you have, well, here you have acceleration, but at some point you can, uh, if they are more close to a disc, you have a warp zone. So it was really a matter of trying to get a gameplay a language on top of the drawing. The colors, of course, and the shape. And later we're trying to have 
um, to add more and more and more, um, say, much more descriptions on, uh, on the shapes and on the drawing itself in the library bit by bit. For instance, it would be very nice to, for all of those to display as one block. They would know that, okay, all are, uh, all are the same. Uh, so, the, uh, the library itself, open for drawers, for gunners, for makers, all of the above. Meaning that, uh, well, I'm already very happy to be here and presenting it uh, to uh, everybody here. If uh, you're curious about using the library, we are very eager, actually, uh, to speak with drawers, uh, with, uh, with programmers, with coders, to either play on what you've done, but more especially to actually use it to create other projects. So please, get in touch with it. And very quickly, because I don't have much time left, good? Perfect. It's the lesson learned. So while it might not be very, very um, technical, let's say, for me it's the most important and most interesting part, actually. It's, uh, so I told you about the library, but it could have been used like, wow, a decade ago, something like that. Uh, but no, this is pretty amazing, actually. And, uh, but the lesson learned are the most important. It's how to, uh, how to use well the library itself. Uh, first, we saw that you need to be close to the drawing. It's like the, the flip paper is very nice because you actually, you play and you draw and you don't have to move to switch from one another. And the time of switching from one another is paramount. Really, is very, very important. Because if it's not, if it's too much, like at some point, anybody could have, I um, mean, had to move for two meters, which takes one second if you're slow. So it was very, very short, and yet nobody would make back and forth between drawing and playing, because the uh, activation energy to actually go to drawing when you're playing and to switch was too high somehow. And it sounds stupid, but when you're doing something, you really want to have a flow, and not every time to be cut and all that. So uh, being close to your drawing was very, very important. And sometimes you had weird results. It's actually playable. <laughs> the point was that you, uh, you really had to... Uh, Two kind of people, people that try to get a uh, real pinball and say, okay, I know what is happening, I know this stuff, let me draw like the, my dream pinball and all that, which was pretty fun. And sometimes you had just people going batshit insane and drawing whatever path through their mind. And the fun part was that both were really fun, really, really fun. Uh, you might want to stay more on the pinball one because, wow, you really want to get a better score. Uh, you might want to just experiment a lot of those uh, really fun parts. But the best one in the end is when you mix both. As I told you, it's a matter of playing and drawing and have closing the loop together, while in the end, it should show the result. It's like having a fun free paper to play having, uh, and having an amazing drawing that not just is nice when it's static, when, when it lights, uh, when you play it. Uh, this is mine, I love it. <laughs> so yeah, and this one is a fun one actually, because the um, yellow lights, uh, when uh, the ball goes uh, on top of it, so it's just like, I don't know, it's like a firewall, a nice one. Anyway, I wanted to have it here. <laughs> so, yeah, and when you have, so, yeah, disclaimer, I don't know how to draw. When you have people that know how to draw, come back, please. Hello, perfect. So, this is the kind of stuff you, uh, you can have. And, okay, this one is actually a bit hard to play, but it's really nice, and when you see it lighter, pretty, uh, pretty cool. So, uh, you can have a lot, uh, a lot of kind of drawing. So, for instance, this one is really more like playing like a pinball. And uh, the very fun part, actually, when we are wondering about what we are, Jeremy and I, uh, about this work, we are not game designer. What we are usually, pretty stupid, but still, we are game designer designer, meaning that we will design rules for game designers to use, for players to then use again. Meaning that we will define that, for instance, the, the red will be bumpers, the yellow will be acceleration and warp zone and all that, and then you will have the player as a game designer too, actually, that will design his own level. So you have in this loop between player and game designer, and this creates an amazing result for me. Very someone, I mean, one that is very very fun, which is angst. Meaning that when you, if you think about it, actually, when you play a game, you always have an excuse, a motivation. It's like, why are you playing against this game? Oh, I want to top my score. Okay. So what do you, why are you still playing by, uh, at this hour of the night? Because I want to kill this boss before doing that or something like that. You always have a motivation. And usually, a motivation or an excuse. And having fun is not on the top of the list usually. As if you need an excuse to have fun. And here, the fact is that 
since you're uh, the player and the game designer, there is no real end objective. You can't win the game in the end. You could even get trying to get a high score, but in the end, since you define where the points are, and usually when you have kids playing this stuff, uh, they put points everywhere, up to almost breaking the system, actually. So it doesn't really make sense anymore. So it's really a pretty, pretty fun exercise, actually, to almost then like to be, a, well, God and the human, both at the same time. So this would be actually lesson to be learned rather than lesson learned, because we are not sure yet exactly what to make of it, to be honest. Anyway, so, and yes, back to the mud, the reality. This was some stuff that we were pretty surprised about, at the kind of gameplay you could have. Meaning that, at first, since we were just Jeremy and I, oops, and two minutes, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, since we were just working together, so one would be uh, trying to flip paper alone, he would draw, he would play, and that's all right. But when we start to exhibit uh, the flip paper, we had many, many, many people on the same flip paper. <coughs> and you had like, groups of friends, one playing, the other one just like bothering and drawing while the other one is playing. You scan and poke in real time, uh, almost real time, and the ball was still in peace, and you would continue actually the new, uh, the new drawn pinball. So it was really uh, a big surprise actually to see people playing this stuff and drawing this stuff with, uh, I mean, I'm not alone, but uh, with many other people. Then uh, you have, uh, yes, another fun stuff is this idea of having the paper as a cartridge. And then again, back to the mud, because if we, could ha if we had used a whiteboard or, I don't know, a touch screen, it would have been probably easier actually to do, but not as fun in the end. So here you can actually take, hop, another uh, well, cartridge, another game uh, level from any other people and just play it, start again, and get inspiration. For instance, here we were at uh, um, an exhibition about uh, uh, comics. So you had comics drawers that went on the, the flip paper and made uh, a lot of stuff. So it was really nice for other people to be able to actually play on some game, game design designed by some of their favorite uh, authors. And another fun stuff is that uh, uh, since it's paper, you can really like cut it, pass it again, so it really redefines really cut, copy, and past. We have it, and we have it like live, real. So it's really fun. You can, if you have an object in your, ha in your, uh, in your pocket that is blue, yellow, uh, red or green or something, you can put it on top of, uh, of the flip paper to recognize the color. So you have many, many, many ways actually to interact, not just the one we expected at first. And to finish on that, uh, the, two, uh, the first two are, yes, so here you see a few ones, but you might wonder what actually is uh, the one on the top right. And if you can read from afar, sauce. It was indeed with, uh, let me remember, okonomiyaki sauce, I think, some kind of Japanese sauce, and it worked. A bit weird, but it worked. And you can imagine actually using for the three kinds of colors, ketchup, mm, blueberry maybe, and wasabi. So if you like eating paper, you can eat your drawing after that. So you can really open up to a lot of crazy uh, interactions. And the fun part is that it's not crazy, meaning I need one year of work crazy. It's crazy, that's like, let's do it tonight crazy. This is the real fun part of it. And the last, because it's a matter of drawing with, but also a matter of Going on. <laughs> it was an exhibition. The guy had exactly the perfect colors, actually, we are using at this point. I said, like, man, you have to play your shirt. <laughs> and here is it. So if you see me here, thanks, I took the pictures. Yes. So, uh, so here you go. And all that, of course, is uh, mostly for fun. But I mean, it's really, uh, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff to explore with it. This is the point. It's, uh, I never expected, I, I was not looking for someone to have the right t-shirt and say, okay, you, come here, we'll make a nice picture. No, he just appeared and said, oh man, but we can do it, let's do it. And I'm sure that that's what we discovered in the past, past uh, year or six months, something like that. I'm sure we'll discover a lot more. And I'm sure in the upcoming years, there will be a lot more that we won't be able to discover because there is too much actually for both of us, Jeremy and I. So this is why we really want slash need programmers, coders, people that want to prototype some games, some interaction, something that would be not a game, but something more, let's say, artistic, a prototype, something used in the business world with it, I don't know, or drawer, something like that, to really show us how even further we can push this idea of interacting with Pigment's canvas. So, here you go.